Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of Tulsa King, the brand new series that took the world by storm. Set in the heart of the city of Tulsa, this tale of power, corruption, and family legacy follows the rise of Sylvester Stallone's character as he takes on the New York Mafia, the FBI, biker rebels and much more. From high-speed car chases to explosive confrontations, the action never stops in Tulsa King. So sit back, relax, and get ready for a wild ride as we take you through all the twists, turns, and thrills of Tulsa King's first season. Tulsa King Episode 1 begins from a prison cell. A convict by the name of Dwight Manfredi, aka The General, was released today. He is picked up by a blacked-out car and is taken to a mansion. He is instructed to enter the room and when he goes in he sees old his old mobster friends. The Rock, is the leader of the crime family, followed by his son named Chicky. Dwight starts to immediately mention that he wants compensation for spending 25 years in prison for a murder he took the raps for. Instead, they tell Dwight that they are sending him to Tulsa, Oklahoma instead, and they will be giving him a wage as well as some compensation. Dwight feeling betrayed starts arguing with them saying they are banishing him for all he has done for the family. Vincent begins yelling at Dwight which results in an elbow to his jaw knocking him out. Then after everyone pulls out their guns, The Rock tells them to stop and Dwight gets his moment to exit before it escalates. Dwight then takes a plane to Tulsa and upon arrival gets help from a cab driver. Dwight tells him to go to a hotel that won't draw any attention. On the drive, the driver introduces himself as Tyson. They have some laughs about how Dwight looks like a mobster and then Dwight sees a marijuana store and becomes confused. He realizes that weed is a legal medical substance in Tulsa and gives Tyson some cash to wait outside for him as he explores the shop. He walks in and says he wants to talk to the owner. They tell him to beat it, which results in a bottle getting thrown on the security guard's face. The owner named Bodie walks out with his hands up. Dwight says he wants to see some journals or bookkeeping of his business. Inside the office Dwight cannot believe the numbers the business is pulling in and then threatens Bodie to open up the safe. Half a million in cash is in there and Dwight takes 40 grand and tells Bodie he is now his business partner and will be taking 20% off his profits in exchange for protection. He walks out the store and gives Tyson the 40 grand and tells him to buy a blacked out navigator. He also tells him that he works for him now for 2000 a week. Tyson cannot believe his eyes and goes to drop him off at a motel so he can buy the navigator. Dwight goes inside and unpacks his suits and whatnot then goes to the reception. The lady calls him an Uber and Dwight gives her some cash. He goes around town and meets some people. Upon arrival at a food bar, he meets Mitch. An ex-convict like Dwight but only did 5 years. The following day Dwight is waiting for Tyson but when he rocks up with his mom's car, Dwight is confused. Tyson says the dealership didn't believe a man of his stature could have that amount of cash without it being illegal. Dwight and Tyson go to the store where Dwight walks into the main office. He asks the man why he didn't accept the cash but Dwight isn't happy with his attitude and smacks him. He beats him to a pulp then drives off with his new navigator. They go to a shopping center and get some ice cream. As Dwight goes to clean up, a man eyes Dwight out and seems like he knows him and rushes off. That night, Dwight goes to see his new friend Mitch. He is then approached by a woman named Stacy. We jump ahead some time and see Dwight has upgraded his hotel to a 5 star. Stacy is there talking to him and when he reveals that he is 75 years old, she thanks him and walks out. In the last few minutes we witness that Stacy is actually an ATF agent, and their friends from the FBI sent out a warning of a known ex-gangster that has moved to Tulsa. When she looks and sees Dwight there, she begins swearing at herself. We move on to the man that I Dwight out from the mall and is on a phone call asking someone if Dwight Manfredi has been released from prison. The first episode comes to an end as we see Dwight looking out his window at Tulsa, the city he wishes to conquer. Episode 2 begins with Dwight still in the Mayo Hotel. He is on his new laptop and is attempting to find the location of his lost daughter. After inputting the information the website asks for a small fee. He doesn't have a card and gets frustrated. He then goes to the local coffee shop. His order is ready and as he walks he asks the waiter for a glass cup. She says we do not do that anymore. He gets irritated and annoyed at how the world changed so fast. Elsewhere, the FBI agent Stacy is calling her friend in the office to ask about information regarding Dwight. Her friend asks why she wants the information to which she responds with work-related activities. Her friend laughs as she knows there is more to the story than that. After Dwight has his coffee, he roams around the streets of Tulsa and sees a kid playing with his mother. He feels jealousy as he wished he could have a connection like that. He keeps walking and a lady screams from behind him saying that the circle he is on is the center of the universe. He stands in the middle and to his surprise he sees a horse walking on the street. He feels as if he is seeing things and he then walks up to the woman. He offers her some money, she looks at him in disgust and walks off. Elsewhere, we see that Stacy is sitting with her psychologist. 
she is speaking to him about how her current husband is dating another girl. She also illustrates how she saw someone. He looks in surprise and asks about the guy to which she responds with, very old. We also know that she is currently in the middle of a divorce with her current husband and is merely staying with him for futile reasons. We then go back to New York. Vincent is not happy as he cannot speak properly from Dwight hitting him so hard. He asks Chicky that he be able to hurt Dwight back. Chicky says that it's father's friend and he cannot do that. He says he will arrange for something to be done. Vincent then storms out of the laundering store in rage. Dwight sees his driver for the first time this episode and asks Tyson a question. He asks that he needs a card to which Tyson says to him, let's go to the bank. Dwight wants to pick up some cash prior and walks into the marijuana store. He walks Bodie into the office and simply makes him open the safe. He takes his 20% cut out and leaves. Upon entering the bank he has stacks of money on the counter. He hands the banker his license in which he begins to laugh. The license is 20 years out of date and is handed back to him. He says he needs one that is up to date to open an account. Tyson and Dwight then make a plan for him to go and renew his license. Meanwhile, the man from the previous episode that panicked inside the mall is seen in a ranch. He receives a phone call from a friend. He listens to the person saying to him that Dwight has been released from prison, that he is also staying in Tulsa. The man also tells him that he would be living in the most expensive hotel in that area, which they conclude is the Mayo Hotel. Dwight has to do a test to renew his license. He does not know the answers and so grabs the man sitting next to him and copies his answers. He passes. And in doing so they go to take his photo. To our humorous surprise he turns his head as though he is taking a mugshot. The cameraman is surprised and tells him what are you doing. He goes to the desk to get his license but is then told that he has to do a driving test. The lady says there is a five week wait. He pulls out some cash and she says there is a free booking next week. Dwight goes back to the bank and gives the man his paper certifying his identity. The banker fixes his account and gets up to shake hands with Dwight. They walk out of the bank, and Dwight receives a phone call from Chicky. Chicky tells Dwight that amends have to be made. Dwight is confused and Chicky clarifies saying that he broke Vincent's jaw and that a $100,000 compensation will suffice. Dwight pretty much says that he is gonna send a bomb instead. Back in the hotel room Dwight was catching up on some reading when a knock on his door is heard. He goes up to the door and Stacy was there waiting for him. He is surprised that she came back to his hotel and asks what she is doing here. Dwight walks her into his room. She does not hesitate in the slightest way and tells Dwight that she is a FBI agent. He looks in surprise and feels set up. She tells him that she will not, and cannot help him if he does anything criminal related. He understands and tells her that he is merely having a holiday in Tulsa. And to that she turns around and walks out of the hotel. Back at home, Tyson is cleaning the navigator. His dad walks out and looks at his son. He tells him that he should be in college. Tyson says that he is working for a businessman and he could learn a lot from the man. His dad disagrees and gets into his car. Later on the navigator is driving on a highway. Tyson, Dwight and Bodie are all present in the car. They are making their way to the weed farmer so Dwight can have a chat with him. They arrive at the farm. They all get out of the car and look at the astonishing view. There were anchors of land of weed. They are greeted by the cousin of the owner. The man is not friendly and is not happy with uninvited guests on the land. His name, or nickname for that matter, is Badface. But Dwight likes to call him Fuckface instead. Dwight gets into his face. The man eyes Dwight and they are about to start fighting with one another. The owner runs out of the house screaming telling them to stop. He tells them both to relax and to come inside. After everyone gets seated, the owner of the house walks in and offers them some THC infused lollies. He introduces himself to the group as, Jimmy. Dwight declines the lollies and says he negotiates with a clear head. Jimmy replies with, there will be no negotiations. Dwight says that he will buy in bulk and the deal he has in mind is, 1,200 for first 10 units bought, 1,100 for next 10, and 1,000 for next 10. The remaining 270 out of 300 units will be $750. Jimmy tells him he drives a hard bargain and they get up and shake hands on a done deal. Jimmy then tells Dwight that the syrup he is eating is highly infused with THC. He stops eating and looks up. He begins laughing as he realizes he is stoned. On the car ride home he is smoking and is 100% stoned. He starts acting like a toddler and annoys Bodie. Elsewhere the unknown man that wants to find Dwight, picks up his phone. He calls the Mayo Hotel and asks for the room number of his friend Dwight. The man says okay and goes to phone Dwight's room to which the man says it's all good don't worry about it and ends the call. Back in the hotel, Dwight receives a mail that contains his debit card. He inputs the information online and accesses the information on his daughter. 
He looks at the number and with fear picks up his phone. He puts the number in and calls it. A man picks up saying his name is Emery. Dwight then tells the man he would like to speak to his daughter. The man was starstruck and tells his wife that her father is on the phone. She does not want to speak with him. Dwight says he just wants to hear her voice. She talks and says, there, you heard my voice, and ends the call. He is gutted inside and goes for a walk. As he is walking he sees the supposed center of the universe. He stands in the middle of it and is in tears. He says one of the saddest quotes. I stopped seeing her because it was too hard on her. No. I stopped seeing her because it was too hard on me. Episode 3 begins with a police siege being conducted on a man. Stacy is there with her many armed units and helicopter as well. The man is holding a gun and his boss approaches the site to help the cops. Instead he tells him to do as he pleases and is kicked off the property. After looking out the window he sees no way out, so instead he looks at the ground and activates the explosives which blows up the building. Elsewhere, Dwight is hanging out at his local coffee shop again. As he is drinking his coffee he turns his head and to his surprise sees the same horse roaming the streets from the previous episode. The barista then also looks at the horse and says she's seen it before. We finally know that Dwight isn't seeing things or going crazy. He continues practice driving for his upcoming test and makes his way to Bodhi's shop. There seems to be a party that is ongoing and Dwight walks to the back of the property and sees Bodhi sitting there. Someone passes out as Dwight looks and trips out what the hell these kids are doing. It seems they are inhaling balloons and looks at Bodhi to explain and the answer was they are doing nitrous oxide. Later that night Dwight goes to speak to Mitch at the bar. He tells him that using the cover of the bar they could bring 30 tanks of nitrous oxide in. Mitch agrees and goes to order the tanks. The next day is the day of reckoning. Dwight gets into his navigator to go for the driving test. But they are being watched by the same paranoid man from the previous episodes. The instructor comes out and gets into the car. The test begins and Dwight is just cruising through the course. The instructor likes Dwight and says the kids these days are annoying to deal with. They approach a set of lights. A person next to them with a balaclava pulls out a gun as Dwight gets undercover and gets shot at repeatedly. Dwight does not care as he is an OG and follows the assassin in the middle of a driving test. He puts the pedal down and manages to go around to cut the car off at an intersection. He sees the car and rams right into it. The instructor was squealing like a bitch and Dwight tells him to. Shut the fuck up. He puts his head back down and both cars are still drivable and so he begins chasing again. The car in front pulls in between a truck and car and when Dwight goes to do it the gap closes in and the driver pulls away. He sees a partial plate and uses the blood of the instructor to write the letters down. Cops immediately arrive on the scene and Dwight tells the instructor not to say a word as they are taken back to the station. At the station Dwight plays the dumb card. He says it was a random attack and he has no clue why it happened. Elsewhere, the man that shot at Dwight is seen exiting his car. He puts fuel and uses a match to set fire to it and leave no evidence behind. Dwight is hanging out at the station as Stacy walks into the room. She pretty much jumps at the occasion to see Dwight. She tells him that he is free to leave. He thanks her and walks out of the station. The following day, Dwight is hanging out in his room when he decides to give Chicky a call. He was not happy and suspects that Vincent set the shooting up. Chicky assures him that Vincent would not have done anything as they have an agreement with one another. Dwight doesn't believe him and ends the call. Meanwhile, at the FBI headquarters, Stacy and her team are looking into the bombing earlier that day and know that the boss, Colin Waltrip, is the mastermind and is arming the local bikers up. The man has done jail time and has many murder charges under his belt. His right-hand man, or woman for that matter is, Roxy. They are a dangerous gang and the FBI is scared of them. At the hospital, the driving instructor is sitting in his bed minding his business when Dwight comes in. The man is paranoid from Dwight but holds it together. Dwight gives him an envelope. The man opens it and trips out. There is 10k in there and Dwight tells him that is his compensation for giving him a pass. He gives him a note that has number plates on it and tells him to call up his friends and get him a location or ID of that car. Dwight also gives out more money to Tyson and tells him to buy another car. He also tells him that if he stays as the driver then it's his choice and on him if anyone close gets injured. Stacy goes back to the site of the explosion. She starts looking for clues into what type of explosives or weapons the man had. She instead sees a lonely dog scared and wandering around. She feels bad for it and opens up her car door, deciding to keep the dog. She drives off the property and goes back home. Dwight gets lucky as the instructor found him the location for the car. He has a look and gets even luckier. The idiot that put fire to the car had the windows closed and that doesn't work. He starts finding items and gets Tyson to look them up. He finds a weird item that has R7 on it. It was a local horse ranch a few kilometers away. 
White takes Tyson home and goes alone. He gets down and is instructed that the manager is at the back. He goes to the back and sees a woman riding a horse. She comes off it and walks towards Dwight. He greets her and decides to make a lie and say he is a private investigator. That one of his investigations led him here and he would like to ask around. She tells him unless he has a warrant he can pretty much fuck off. He sits in his car and stakes out the ranch. He waits till late at night, and sees a car pulling out. He believes this is the shooter and turns his car on and starts to follow him. The driver then pulls into a quiet street. The man pulls his car into a driveway as Dwight stops his car on the other side of the road. He has a gun in the holster and is ready for anything. He looks back and sees the man hugging and playing with his kids. Dwight feels bad for the moment and lets him be. Episode 4 starts off with Dwight's shooter and how there is dog shit in his yard. His neighbor's dog once again has done its business as his neighbor drives past and gives him a finger. He walks to his car and starts getting the shovel out. As he's looking, Dwight walks up behind him and sticks a gun to his back. He takes him inside and throws him on the ground. He clocks the gun and tells him who sent you to kill me. The man starts pleading and says his name is Armand Truizzi. That he left New York because he was forced to orchestrate the stabbing and killing of Dwight in jail. Dwight gives him a big smack and says he doesn't believe that his friend Pete would set him up. Armand swears on his children's lives that Pete tried to kill Dwight and that after it failed he left New York and came to Tulsa. He says that when he saw Dwight he thought he was looking for revenge. But it turns out it was just a misunderstanding. Dwight believes him, but doesn't forgive him. He says that he wants a starting $300 a week rent from Armand. His wife walks in and trips out. She sees Armand and runs to help as Dwight leaves the house. Later on in the day Tyson is driving Dwight to a tailor to fix him up some nice suits. Dwight looks like a proper OG now as he instructs the tailor to make some more suits for him. At the FBI headquarters, Stacy is still being a silent stalker. She keeps constantly checking in on Dwight and looks into his records once more. Her friend even notices and somewhat laughs at her. The nitrous oxide tanks manage to pull through and come in. Mitch bought 30 tanks under the disguise of his food business. He slaps Dwight's back because he knows there is going to be some good money being made. Dwight invites Bodie, Fred and Tyson to the bar. He tells them go take 10 tanks to a festival and sell them at $10 per balloon. They were making a killing at the festival. But two biker looking men walk up to Bodie and Tyson and tell them who gave them permission to sell here. Tyson says we didn't ask. Both the men then walk off. Later that night, Armand is having a chat with his wife. He breaks the gangster code and snitches on himself and his boys. He tells her everything about his past and all the men he used to hang around. His wife looks at him in disgust and walks off. The next day Tyson picks up Dwight. They get in the car and he pulls out a paper bag to give him. Dwight looks inside and is pleased with the amount made and gives some free cash to Tyson. Tyson says he's going to buy a pinky ring but instead Dwight takes his off and gives it to him for free. Elsewhere, the local bikers were having a meeting. Their boss Colin, and right hand, Roxy, were speaking to the two bikers at the party. Roxy says they're weaklings for not stopping them on the spot and so Colin gives the signal and those two bikers get beaten up. Armand, is scared shitless of Dwight. And so, instead of giving him cash he steals him a metal horse worth 20 grand. Armand says if he sells it he will get caught. Dwight looks at him and says that if he sells it they're going to think that he stole it. Dwight tells Armand to take it back. Later on, Dwight calls up his sister. She keeps putting it on him and is not that happy to hear his voice. She says that their younger brother is very sick and Dwight cannot speak to him. She sounds very bitchy and tells Dwight she'll speak to him later and ends the call. No gangster series is complete without family problems. Tyson's dad, Mark doesn't like that Tyson is a chauffeur. He believes that he is working for a mobster and Tyson disagrees with him and lies to his family. Later that night, Tyson and Bodie are back at the festival selling more balloons. The bikers from the previous night were spotted and immediately start smashing Tyson up. They stole both the tanks, the money, and gave the boys an ass whooping. Dwight is one calm man as he smokes his cigar. Tyson apologizes for losing the money. Dwight and Mitch say there is nothing to apologize for and that he has a plan to sort this out. He tells everyone to return to the bar at night time. Armand also gets a call from Dwight, he says that he is to go to the bar tonight as well. When Tyson goes home he cops a mad scolding from his dad. His dad starts screaming at Tyson and tells him to look in his mother's face and lie to her that he is not working for a mobster. Tyson feels insulted and starts talking back, saying he earns more money than his dad. He then starts throwing money at his parents and gets kicked out of the house. It's night time and time to get ready for war. Everyone is there, they also manage to get bad face to help them. Tyson walks in and tells Dwight that everything is ready. They start walking out the bar but Tyson sees his dad walking in. He says, ah shit. Cause he knows this isn't going to be fun. Dwight then tells Tyson to wrap it up. 
Mark turns around and things get heated between them. Dwight says Tyson is a man and can make his own decisions. Mark says he is joining them for the night, as he doesn't want his son to get beat up again. Dwight says whatever and they all leave the bar together, they get to the festival and hang out in the car park. They counted 12 bikers and Bodhi says there better be a plan that doesn't involve me getting bashed again. Dwight tells him to relax and starts walking to the car and says to them, it's time to grow some balls. They grab some baseball bats and start walking towards the festival. The shop's close and the team is walking together. They see the first biker and make him their first victim. It's all chaos as everyone is just brawling and smashing anything in sight. Bodhi gets pinned down but Badface saves him. Bodhi gets up and cleans up after Badface. Tyson is also getting cornered. But his dad came from behind and saved his ass. A good father-son bonding time. Armand is on a different level and is just swinging at anything. They are victorious and manage to get the tanks and the cash back from the bikers. They return back to home base and are all on adrenaline highs. Dwight gives Armand some money for his help and Tyson and his dad are having some good bonding time with each other. Back at the hotel, Dwight is washing up and gets a call from his sister. She facetimes him and says she is at the hospital. She tells Dwight that their younger brother is dying and to say your last few words to him before he is gone. Dwight begins by saying sorry to his brother. Sorry that he wasn't around, sorry that he isn't feeling well, and sorry for not being an older brother. He immediately gets emotional as he begins reminiscing on stories of them as children. He says he loves him and will see him in the next world. He ends the call and sits there looking back at his decisions in his life. Armand gets back home after a long night. He walks towards his house and steps on dog shit. He turns around and sees his neighbor. He is fed up and tells his wife get inside as he walks across the road. He grabs his boot and smudges the shit right into his neighbor's face. He gets him on the ground and starts laying into him as his wife stands there in disbelief. Episode 5 begins with Dwight putting on some mad looking crocodile scaled belt and shoes. He does his tie and grabs his suitcase and walks off. He ends up in New York at a funeral home from his recently deceased brother. He attends the family gathering. His sister, Joanne runs up to him and hugs him. She is excited to see him after 25 years and tells him let's go pay respects to our brother. After they make a prayer for him Dwight looks around and spots his daughter out. Tina is not happy and immediately gives him the cold shoulder. He walks out and joins his sister for a smoke. He asks her to tell him about his grandkids. It turns out that Dwight has two grandchildren that are twins. They are named Cody and Ryan. Back in Tulsa, two marshals are having lunch with a biker member. He nods his head and we once again see the boss of the biker gang sitting on his bike. The man then gives the cops a paper with information regarding Dwight and his crew. In the hotel at New York Dwight gets a phone call from Chicky. Chicky tells him that he didn't ask permission to come back to New York. He also tells him that tomorrow he wants to see him at the hospital because his father isn't doing so well. In Tulsa, Tyson is bored and is just driving around. As he's driving he gets pulled over and two cops get out of the car and go on each side. The cop asks for registration and as he goes to get it, he asks to see his hands. Tyson is confused and just gets the paper anyways. They play dirty and immediately arrest him on sight for suspicion. They do not have any body cams on and coincidentally find drugs in the car making Tyson eligible for jail. He calls Dwight but he does not answer and is then forced to go into holding with many other people. He sits in the corner and just waits. In New York, Dwight goes to the family dinner and gives the waiter a nice amount of cash to keep the food and drinks flowing. Tina gives him a dirty as he says he wants everyone to introduce themselves to him as he has not met some of them. The first two are introduced as Stella and Denise. He then looks at his daughter's husband and says he remembers his name as Emery from the call a few days ago. He said he is a bit disappointed that Emery didn't ask his blessing to marry his daughter. Tina gets cut and starts being foul with her dad saying that he can't just buy his way into the family. That Emery is more of a man than he will ever be. She gets up and leaves. At the hospital the mobsters are playing cards. Dwight walks in and greets everyone. Vincent's missus has a bit of a sneeze attack, and Dwight being a gentleman gives her some tissues. Vincent once again loses it and stands up to Dwight, just barking off. Chicky tells him to calm down as they're in a hospital. He walks Dwight in the hallway and tells him to stop annoying Vincent and that his dad is sleeping and can't be seen now. Tyson is struggling in jail. He asks the two coppers if he can use the bathroom. They point to a drain in the middle of the room and he starts pleading. They run amuck on him and tell him give us the password to your phone and we'll let you out. He gives them the code and they let him out. Stacy is seen at the park answering a phone call. Dwight called her and says he wants to hear a familiar voice. She laughs and then goes to a serious tone and tells him that the bikers he smashed at the festival are more than what they seem. She tells him she wants to talk to him in person. Dwight gets another call from Tyson and answers. He talks to Tyson but no one responds and the call is ended. It seems the bikers called Dwight and when he spoke they ended it and bagged Bodhi. Tyson is finally being released from prison. 
The guard gives him some items back and tells Tyson that the car is in an impound lot. Tyson asks for his phone and the guard said it was not listed. These cops were playing real dirty and Tyson knew it. Back at the ranch, Armand is going about his daily life when one of his workers starts laughing at what he'd done the previous night at the festival. He walks up to her and asks how she knew. She says her uncle is a sergeant at the biker club that he smashed up and that he was going to get revenge on the people who'd done it. Armand is very nervous as his name has already spread around Tulsa in a few days. Shit is getting serious as they unveil the bag from Bodie and put a knife to his neck. He looks scared as hell as he is a nobody without Dwight. The biker leader sits down and tells Bodie how is he involved with Dwight. Bodie becomes a snitch and rat, he says he is being extorted and he cannot do anything about it. The bikers want to send a message across to Dwight's crew and so go to the bar and walk Bodie in. The dirty coppers then tell Mitch, does this mutt belong to you? They want to ask him questions to which he says no thanks. They threaten him and Mitch loses his shit and says, Get the fuck out of my joint. Excuse me? You want in fucking sign language? And I suggest since this establishment is situated on Cherokee land where you have absolutely no authority that you get your fat sorry fucking cottage cheese asses out of here. Bodie puts his hands up and they uncuff him and walk out. Mitch walks Bodie in the back and asks what the hell happened. In New York, Dwight walks into his daughter's shop. He asks her is there any way to move past what happened. She says no. She has cut at him for leaving her and her mother with nothing. No credit card, no car, absolutely nothing. Dwight pretty much says he made sure that his old crew protected and provided for both her and her mother. Kina gets emotional and starts saying that worked out so well sarcastically. She starts talking about the man nicknamed, the package, and accidentally says. Well, let's just say one Tuesday night, well, I learned the hard way why he's called. She stops halfway and Dwight also realizes why the man is named the package. She gets scared and Dwight tells her to finish the story. She refuses and makes him promise not to do anything. He agrees and just sits there, fuming with rage. He immediately goes to the hospital and walks to see if they were still playing cards, no one is there though. So instead he walks into Pete's room and sits next to his bed. He gives Pete a photo of his dead brother and tells him that family is everything. He asks if Pete knew. Pete looks at him confused. Dwight asks again but this time he gets up with rage. What the fuck? Oh, I knew you. Dwight tells him that he was supposed to protect his family. That he promised to be there for them but instead he sent someone else. He walks out of the hospital with the devil in his eyes. He makes his way to where the boys were playing cards. He sees the package and smacks him with a crowbar. He breaks the TV, kicks the man, punches him, then puts his face onto the stove. An excruciating pain, he slams his head through a table then ties a rope around his neck. He drags him across the floor and Chicky tells him where are you going. He looks at the boys then stomps his boot into the package's face, then stomps again killing him. He then walks out in fury. Episode 6 of Tulsa King begins with Route 66. Like Stallone, Route 66 is quite old but still is amazing to watch. A man on a stable looks inside his barn and sees his horse pilot missing once again. And once again it is just cruising in the middle of Tulsa with no care in the world. Stacy and her partner at the ATF have a mole in Waltrip's crew. Roxy the redhead has information on a new Italian mafia running around town. Stacy immediately tries to get her back on point about the biker gang, but her partner is hooked. His name is Dwight, she says, and Stacy's partner is now going to report this to the FBI. Back in New York, Pete is enraged at his son Chicky for failure to stop the package from assaulting Dwight's daughter, Tina. He said if he knew what he'd done he would skin him alive himself. Chicky tells his dad Dwight is out of control and both him and his daughter need to die. He gets a mad slap from his dad in return and is embarrassed as his dad tells him that's a line no one will ever cross. Meanwhile, Dwight goes to Tina's store and closes the door. He reveals that he killed the package. Tina is in shock and cannot believe what he has done. He tells her that in this game there are lines, and the package crossed them. Tina tells Dwight he just ruined her life. He tells her that no one will come after her that only he is in danger. Dwight returns back to Tulsa and sees Tyson. His first question is what happened to the car. Tyson told him what happened to him when Dwight was gone and that he got locked up. They take off and immediately go to Bodie's store. They see a sign that says they are currently closed down as Bodie does not answer his phone as well. Back at the stable, Roxy walks up to Armand and tells him that her boss wants to sort out the drama between the two crews. Armand looks at her and says that he'll deliver the message and cannot promise anything more than that. Dwight finally makes his way into his crew's home base and walks in. He is beyond happy to see Mitch and tells him what the hell happened when he was at New York. Mitch explains to him how the bikies shook Bodie and Tyson up. Later on his daughter Tina gets a call from her dad. He tells her is checking up on her. 
She says that she is getting phone calls and no one is talking on the other line. He tells her that he'll call her back. He then calls one of the men that works with Pete. He tells him that he wants everything to cool down and so Dwight tells him to come out to Tulsa and meet. The man says he will ask Pete first and see if he allows it. Dwight tells him okay and we cut scenes to the following day where we see the pothead of all potheads. Bodie is meditating after his stressful week and gets a loud knock on his door. He gets up and sees FBI agents telling him they want to talk to which he tells them okay. Meanwhile they decide to raid his shop and destroy the place inside out. They cannot find any weed or money, then, an officer tells them there is a safe in the back. The mobsters then decide to have a meeting about Dwight's proposal. Chicky reckons it is a setup and Pete once again tells him to shut up and that seeing him will be a good idea. At the same time, Dwight has a sit down with Waltrip. It goes the way you would think. Dwight tells him off, and tells him that there will be no negotiations as he is Mitch by his side. They go back to home base and eat dinner when Armand points to the door. They turn around and see Bodhi. Dwight tells him where the hell he has been and Bodhi tells him the FBI came knocking. This warrants him a pat down. And Dwight continues the questions and tells him what did he tell the FBI. He said to Dwight that he declared that they are business partners and that they can fuck off. Dwight is impressed and points to Mitch. Mitch then comes out with bags of cash on him and Dwight laughs when we see that he took the cash out of the safe in Bodie's store and replaced it with a cigar. Bodie is so happy and goes in for a hug when Dwight puts his fists up as a joke. His crew laugh and he tells Bodie he has his back and gives him a hug. The next day, Dwight goes to his local coffee shop once again. He looks at his watch and the waitress asks him what's wrong to which he tells her, the horse pilot is not out today. She tells him they are going to put it down for escaping so much. Dwight then asks her for her name and she tells him Spencer. She also says it's her last day working at the shop. Dwight has an idea and asks her if she likes horses, which she does. He takes her to the stable where Pilot is. He goes straight to the owner and tells him that he wants the horse and gives him some cash. Meanwhile at the bar where the bikers hang out, Waltrip talks to his number two, groom, and goes over their plan for Manfredi. That's when the red-headed mole comes in, asking too many questions. This is groom's girl, and Waltrip tells him she must learn manners. Groom then walks up to her and tells her to shut her mouth. After buying the horse from its owner, Dwight brings Pilot to the Fenario ranch. He makes a deal with Margaret to train Pilot and house him in her stable. However, Margaret agrees only on the condition that Dwight makes proper arrangements for the horse in a week's time. The next few scenes are the main point of the episode. Dwight goes up to Mitch and tells him, that if he is interested he wants to go into business with him at the bar. Mitch tells him he'll think about it. We then cut to a scene where Tina is walking her kids out of the car when her husband Emery goes to park his car. He comes walking home and then from behind him Chicky comes out of nowhere and belts Emery up. He even breaks his arm in the process. He then gives him a few kicks while casually walking off. Back at the bar, Dwight and Mitch are closing up when bullets come through breaking the window. Mitch and Dwight get down and as Dwight goes to look he gets shot at immediately. He tells Mitch to grab his gun. Mitch crawls and grabs his gun and they both go around the house to see the biker shooting at the bar. They both then open fire and instantly kill him. Dwight double checks he is dead and then Mitch looks at him and tells him that he would be pleased to be business partners with Dwight and shakes his hand. The episode 7 breakdown and recap begins with Mitch and Dwight digging a grave for the biker from the previous episode. They take off the man's jacket and toss him into the hole. We immediately go back to New York and see Pete having a conversation with his doctor. Telling him that Pete should live another 15 years just take it easy with cigars and screaming. Pete tells him he will. Meanwhile Tina gives her dad a call informing him that her husband was jumped the previous night. He cannot believe that Pete and his family lied to him and offers his daughter a stay in Tulsa to which she refuses. After he ends the call Mitch asks him if he should put a fish with the delivery and Dwight tells him no. We move our attention to Tyson and Armand at the train station when Goody Karangi arrives in town. He remembers Armand from his past and asks him what the hell he is doing in Tulsa. Armand says coincidence and walks him out to the car. In the ride towards the home base Goody notices Tyson's ring and says how did he get it. Tyson merely suggests that he bought it. Goody then turns around and tells Armand to be serious about his association with Dwight. Turns out it is exactly as Armand says and it was purely coincidental. Elsewhere, Waltrip and the Black McAdams receive a package. They cut open the box and see a blood-smothered jacket. Waltrip is immediately consumed with revenge, and Pike's girlfriend, Roxy, is devastated and forced to leave. Later, she meets Stacy and begs the ATF officer to free her from their arrangement. However, Stacy convinces Roxy to try and get some evidence against Waltrip that will help her incriminate the biker gang's leader instead and be freed forever. Roxy informs her of a laptop she will get her and meet tomorrow 10am sharp. Bodie and his crew finally go back to their shop and see a dumpyard. 
They agree to start cleaning as Bodhi goes to the back and starts loosening some screws which reveals a hidden USB. He looks shifty as he goes through multiple passwords and looks around making sure no one is watching. Back at home base, Goody and Dwight's men arrive and as he walks in expecting a warm welcoming he receives this instead. You tell that wig wearing motherfucker he comes around my daughter again, I will chop his fucking head off! He is speechless and swears by everything he knows he doesn't have a clue about any attack on Tina's husband and he never heard anything about Tina and Nico either. Dwight accepts his answers from knowing him well as a kid and tells him to sit down and have a drink. Later on that night, Goody reports back to Chicky and his dad and starts babbling about Dwight's operation. He starts off with his men and says, He gets his weed from the Indians, some cowboy runs the bar and the black kid drives him around. It's like the fucking village people. However, while reporting to Chicky he expresses his doubts about Dwight's loyalty to the crime family as he even gave his ring away to Tyson. After comforting Roxy, Stacy confronts Dwight by smashing on his door and demands an answer about Pike's death. However, Dwight refuses to acknowledge his involvement. And in doing so this enrages Stacy who threatens to arrest him and walks off swearing her lungs out. The following day Roxy decides to grow some balls but loses some brain cells when she decides to break into Waltrip's office and start snooping around. She finds a locked drawer and breaks it open with a knife which reveals a hidden laptop. She starts going through it when the door behind her opens up. Waltrip then speaks and startles Roxy. He has a calm and laughable expression as he closes the laptop and politely asks her to start talking. She rats herself out again and explains how she is a rat. He is still very calm and goes to give her the knife as a necklace. As he puts it around her neck she is immediately strangled and we don't need to say what happens to her next. A few hours later, Stacy is waiting for Roxy as she is late. So Stacy decides to call her and a man answers. Stacy says can she speak to Roxy and the man implies that she will no longer be taking phone calls anymore. Who is this? You dialed the number for help. Darling, who did you think would answer? She then gets teary as she knows Roxy is dead. Meanwhile, Dwight meets Bodie, he proposes his new business plan. He wants to renovate Mitch's restaurant and open a casino within it. While Bodie feels the business requires substantial capital. He is impressed with the possibility of using it to launder money. He then asks a random question and says, Are you familiar with NFTs? Crypto? Yeah, I don't like it. Bodhi laughs and says this might change your mind as he turns his laptop around revealing millions of dollars of crypto that he stole. Did you really think you were the only criminal in Tulsa? Dwight is over the moon and is impressed with Bodhi. Back at the hospital, Tina asks her bashed up husband if he would consider moving to Tulsa. Her husband does not agree that moving towards her gangster father would help them get away from gangsters and promises her that it'll be better in New York. It's back to good old father-son bonding time when Chicky helps his father to bath. But once again Dwight is mentioned in their conversation and Chicky becomes annoyed as his dad tells him stop being a sook. Chicky then tells his dad that he is steering the family the wrong way and grabs his father's head and sinks it in the water. After a couple minutes of struggling the arms drop and Chicky walks off looking in the mirror symbolizing being the new head of the family. When news spreads of Pete's death their family and fellow mobsters come to pay their respects. Vincent is among them as he walks up to Chicky and gives him a hug. He asks if there is anything he can do and Chicky says. Can help me get this family back on fucking track. We then move on to the last scene of the movie. Dwight sees Goody still in Tulsa and asks him what he is doing here. He is then informed that Pete died from a heart attack and a funeral will be soon. Dwight mentions that he will not be attending no matter how bad it looks. We know from here on out. Things are going to be spicy between the New York Mafia, and the new Tulsa King mobsters. Episode 8 begins with Mitch teaching his squad how to properly shoot. They all give it a go but miss horribly. Come Tyson's turn he turns the pistol acting like a gangster until he misses. Mitch then shows him how to properly use a pistol and expertly shoots all the bottles showing off his skills. Grace then gives it a go and somehow manages to cleanly shoot the bottles. Dwight is impressed and applauds her skills. Elsewhere, Stacy is waiting for Waltrip at the McAdams hangout as he pulls in. She ferociously walks out of the car and goes in his face asking where he buried Roxy. He acts dumbfounded and surprised and says he does not know who that is. Stacy threatens him as he arrogantly walks off. At home base, Dwight, Bodie, and Mitch met Jimmy and pitched him the idea of opening a casino. They told him that his involvement in it would be hidden by a trust fund. That meant that Jimmy would be able to gain the benefits while being protected from any legal problems. Dwight also asks him if he could arrange for some tough guys like Badface to help him. Back in New York, Chicky is having a meeting with other mobster families and tells them that they need to take out Dwight. The men can't believe what Chicky just said but after making a remark, Chicky throws him on the wall and after getting pulled off he tells everyone go home. Dwight and Tyson then go to stake out the McAdams hideout. While waiting two police officers walk out. 
This is when Tyson points them out as the two dirty coppers that arrested him. At the ATF headquarters, the FBI and Stacy's partner once again mentioned Dwight. Stacy does not want to hear it and gets aggravated announcing to the FBI that her informant was just murdered. But before she died she told Stacy of a laptop with millions of dollars on it. The FBI then agree that Waltrip is a threat and they go to get a warrant. Dwight also agrees that Waltrip is a threat and so meets up with some of Mitch's buddies from jail. He asks if they know how to shoot and if they have the guts to do what is necessary. They tell him there shouldn't be a problem. Dwight then makes his way home and decides to give Tina a call. When she answers he tells her that maybe she should hold on coming to Tulsa for the time being. She knows that things are getting heated down there and tells him that she will wait until Dwight gives her the okay. The FBI and ADF execute their warrant and raid the bar where the McAdams are located. They do not find Waltrip or his right-hand man, but they do manage to find the laptop Roxy was speaking about. They make their way back to headquarters and after opening the laptop they see over $8 million in cash. The FBI agree that Waltrip is no small timer and start making phone calls to freeze his assets. Waltrip hears of the raid and calls up his police men. They said it was an FBI raid and they couldn't have known. Waltrip then starts screaming and tells them to get Dwight in a cell so he can end him. They tell him that they'll do it right away. Then we move on to a scene where Bodie is convincing Jimmy to join their businesses together. That all he has to do is sign a few things and lay back while the cash flow comes in. Jimmy pretty much tells Bodie that that is likely to happen. Later on, Tyson is driving Dwight when suddenly they get pulled over. Dwight recognizes the two dirty cops and tells Tyson to stay in the car and he'll handle it. He walks out of the car with his hand in his jacket and tells the two officers. My hand is wrapped around a f***ing 357 Magnum with 158 grade and hollow point. They then threaten and tell him they know where he lives to which he replies likewise. They slowly back off and get into their car. Dwight then gets into his car and begins laughing as he forgot his gun at home and it was all a bluff. Come my favorite part of the episode is when Chicky gives Dwight a call. He tells him that since his father died he wants no more beef with Dwight and that he is coming down to Tulsa to break bread and make sure there are no grudges. Dwight tells him okay and awaits his appearance. He puts down the phone and Vincent has a lot to say. And the Oscar goes to? Chicky and Vinici. We then move over to a scene where once again Waltrip screams at the coppers on his payroll. He tells them they are useless and that he'll handle Dwight on his own. It's not a mafia show without family drama. And as seen here, Armand's wife says she wants to move out of Tulsa. He tells her stop bringing it up. But she insists and Armand loses it and smacks the food away. She tells him to go away for the night or her and the kids will. He just sits there, fuming. And the last scene of the episode always brings us a cliffhanger ending. Once again Dwight is randomly approached by Stacy. She goes up to him and starts lecturing him and what he stands for. He keeps his calm and still manages to make her laugh. They are having some small talk when suddenly, we see two bikers in an alleyway, Stacy sees them and pulls her gun out and Dwight follows. They start shooting each other and they manage to hit Waltrip second in command. But Stacy then gets shot as Waltrip speeds off. Dwight goes to help Stacy as Tyson pulls back into the street hearing the shots. Dwight sees him and hands him the gun and tells him to dump it. Tyson speeds off only to see an army of officers arriving on the scene. We see a frantic and revengeful looking Dwight as the episode comes to a halt. We begin by going over 25 years ago where both Chicky and Vincent are causing trouble. A man owes them money and they took it upon themselves to torture him for the fun of it. Armand pleads for them to stop as they just ignore him and continue. After he goes out and makes a call to Dwight and gives him the address he goes back inside to see a horrific scene. They are treating the man as if he is a horse and burning a sign on him. Whilst doing it, Dwight enters the room and both Chicky and Vincent shit themselves when they see him. He tells them to back off and to give him the keys. They start looking for them but they seem to have lost it. Simultaneously the rod with fire on it was thrown onto a newspaper and as they go to stomp it out it starts blaring out of control. Dwight goes to rescue the man and when he can't rip the chains off, Chicky screams at him to leave and runs off. Dwight then shoots the cuffs twice still not breaking them. As Armand and everyone leaves he looks at the man and apologizes. The man pleads for mercy, but to Dwight, this is a mercy killing. He pulls the trigger and walks out of the building where the police were waiting for him and arrest him which leads to him getting 25 years. Come to the current day, he is still having headaches with the police as they question him on who shot Stacy and himself. He as usual, didn't hear and didn't see nothing. A man then walks in stating he is Dwight's lawyer and immediately tells the cops what Dwight's charges are. They said they were still thinking, and to that he tells Dwight let's go as they walk out. Like the gentleman he is. He goes straight to the hospital and sees Stacy on the bed. He simply tells her that he owes her his life and cannot ever repay what she did for him. 
She just sits there and takes the compliments as he leaves the flowers and goes. As usual it's time for another enraged Waltrip therapeutical session and as the bikers hide their bikes he does not disappoint. He begins with saying that there shall be no hiding and that no one will rest until every man in Dwight's crew is dead. One of his men say there is too much heat and he is immediately dealt with. The rest of them just stand there in disbelief. After Dwight's release, he is pissed and decides to put up a bounty on Waltrip. He then tells Armand that shit is about to hit the fan and after this there is no turning back. Armand says he will never chicken out ever again and that he just found out Chicky is in town and he'll prove he is now a fighter. Armand's intel was on point, and as Chicky complains about the weather to his boys, he immediately gets up as he sees Dwight walking towards him. Dwight might be 76 but he doesn't care one bit about conflict. He tells Chicky that he didn't tell him he landed in Tulsa and straight away gets to the point. Chicky banished him to Tulsa to die, so he can buzz off and leave him here alone. Vincent tells him to respect the new leader of the family and Dwight tells him to shut up. He walks to Goody and tells him that he has three seconds to decide whether he wants to be with him or working under a moron. Goody immediately chooses Dwight. And to that, Dwight points to two shooters, then another two. He tells Chicky that he will be escorted to the airport and can get out of his town. He turns his back as a sign of disrespect and him and his boys leave. Later on, he has a meeting with his crew and introduces Goody to them saying he is now a member. He looks at his crew and tells them they have two decisions. One, that they can turn around and walk away without an issue. Or two, they can stay and fight, fight fear from within and then wait for their enemies to strike and make sure to hit them back twice as hard. Everyone agrees to stay and walk towards Dwight. This has to be one of the best scenes so far this series. Dwight walks into Bodhi's abode and asks him if he can use his tech with skills to somehow siphon out Waltrip's cash. He says he'll give it a shot. He cracks his neck and does some mad work, using Binance, Metamask and a few hacker tools. He manages to lock onto the laptop that some FBI were looking at and sees 8 plus million dollars. He laughs and says that's a lot of money. No, that was a lot of money. He siphons out the funds as the officers call their boss telling him they have a problem. This man needs some immediate angry issue therapy as he completely loses it. He sees his account at zero dollars and throws his laptop in a tantrum. Back at the hospital, Stacy gets a get well soon card. She opens it and it's from Dwight, it has a USB inside and she fires up her laptop and puts the USB inside. To her shock it has $1 million inside and she cannot believe it. After Dwight's long day, he goes to kick back and play cards with the boys. But then, they hear Harley's outside. Everyone looks at Dwight, and he simply says, go. Everyone sprints into action as they set up some trip wire on the door and get behind the counter as the bikers outside get locked and loaded. Waltrip is at the front and they go inside the front of the building. As they slowly begin walking in, the first few men trip the wire and as it blows up Dwight and his men pop up from the counter and start firing. Waltrip uses his man as a shield and manages to get behind cover. Tyson gets shot at as Dwight takes a few out. Armand also gets shot as his crew keeps firing. Dwight is officially pissed off and goes after Waltrip. He smacks him and runs him into the wall. He uses his own gun and fires the bullet finally finishing him off. He looks back and sees the rest of his men standing and all the bikers dead. He just looks at the blood and chaos and just stands there, soaking it all in. Three months go by, and Tina has moved to Tulsa with her dad. Both his grandsons are there and we can see pure happiness in Dwight for the first time. He decides to ride the horse to show off in front of his family as they have a great time with Pilot. Stacy has recovered very well in three months and her fellow officers commend her for her previous policing history. They tell her she will be reinstated even after conversing with a known felon but they have just one condition. We move on to the last scene of this action-packed episode where they rebuilt Bread 2 Buck. Everyone is there and they all survived. Mitch is leading a band and just hanging out with the new gambling license they just secured. Dwight is hanging out when Fred walks up to him and whispers that there is a girl asking for you outside. As he opens the door, he is happy to see Stacy there. But all she says is, I'm sorry, I just want to say. I hope she doesn't survive the remainder of the series. This new red hair look and this attitude will not be dealt with lightly by Dwight. The coppers then hold up the USB and say he is trying to bribe an officer. They go to put him in the car when Tina runs out. She runs to Dwight and is once again living her trauma of her dad going away in cuffs. They drive off and Dwight just sits there, fueled by rage of betrayal. I want to thank you for watching the season 1 recap of Tulsa King. This took me a lot of time and effort and I would be grateful for your support. Thank you, until the next one.